Hi there guys, how are you doing? This is your friend and tutor Manas and guys today I'll be continuing with my discussion on section of solids. So let's see what the problem has in store. Here we go. A right circular cone diameter of base 60 mm and height 70 mm rests on its base on HP. A section plane perpendicular to HP and inclined at 45 degrees to the VP cuts the cone and is 10 mm in front of the axis. Draw its top view, sectional front view and true shape of the section. So whole lot of things have been given to us. Object obviously is a cone, um, the dimensions of which are base dia 60 mm and height or the axis length 70 mm. Now there is this condition that has been given to us resting on HP on its base. Now guys just you need to think about this. If the cone is resting with its circular base on HP then one thing is for sure that the true shape of its base can only be seen from the top and hence you have to begin by making the top view first and accordingly its front view is going to be made all right now there is this cutting plane detail okay so cuts the pyramid at 45 degrees and passes at a distance of 10 millimeters from its axis so when you speak of an auxiliary vertical plane just think about this this plane in fact is perpendicular to hp okay so a plane perpendicular to hp will appear as a line in from the top Think, think, just think about this, okay? And that line, in fact, would be making 45 degree angle, and at the same time, it would be passing from a point that lies 10 mm from the axis, all right? So, we're going to be making sure that all of these details reflect perfectly in our drawing. And now, the solution again has been divided into three phases. First phase is going to be all about the positioning of the object with reference to HP and VP. Second phase is going to be all about the cutting plane details and in the third phase we'll draw Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what phase one has to offer So guys this in front of you is the cone and we know very well that it is resting with its base on HP Okay, then one thing is for sure that the true shape of this circular base Okay, can only be seen from the top and it's gonna look something like this. So this is how you need to begin Below this XY line, you're going to make this circle, okay? And accordingly, it's front view going to be made. It's going to look something like this. All right. Now, we have a cutting plane, all right? So that cutting plane, um, let me, let me tightly, slightly tilt this. Okay. All right. Let me slightly rotate this cutting plane because this cutting plane has been kept at an angle of 45 degrees. So let us see how it looks from the top. Okay, and there we go. All right, now there is this cutting plane, this yellow colored plane that you see. Okay, and when you try to look at this from the top, you have this angle as 45 degrees. Okay, now what we're gonna do is, this is the top view. This represents the sectional top view. And when you want to have the true shape of the section, you're gonna have to look at this from over here exactly in direction perpendicular to that of the cutting plane okay and it's going to look something like this this is going to be the true shape of section all right so let's initially start by making an xy line and we know very well that this is resting this cone is resting with its base on the hp so the true shape of the base is going to be seen from the top and hence we start by making a circle okay in the top view let's divide this circle into four equal parts and this circle is going to be having a dimension of Radius is 30, diameter was 60 and hence radius is 30. Let's divide this circle into eight equal parts. Okay, now let's give numbers to each and every point that we have made. Okay, so like starting from this point, one, two, three, and so on. Now, when you try to look at this from the front, let's have projector lines from one, from two comma eight, like this. And these are the intersection points at the base or in the front. This is gonna be one dash, this is gonna be two dash, comma eight dash, and so on. Now we have this axis, all right, and this axis length or the height of the axis has been given as 70 millimeters. Now let's uh, draw the generators from 1 dash to O dash, from 2 dash to O dash, and then from 8 dash to O dash, and so on. Now there is this uh, point through which this cutting plane is passing. You see this, all right? See this point? Let me show that once again. Now this point is at a distance of 10 millimeters in front of this axis. We have an axis over here. In the front view, you can see this axis, and this axis apparently looks like a point in the top. So through this point, 
a cutting plane would be passing something like this and the angle that it's going to make this cutting plane is going to make is going to be 45 degrees all right so let's darken the portion you can see this i have already darkened the portion falling immediately behind this cutting plane okay so that is the portion which is remaining okay and this is the cut off portion now we're going to write the intersecting points like somewhere along the circular base between 2 and 3 we have a point in the form of a okay like this this is going to be point a and somewhere along this generator o3 we have point b generator o4 we have point c generator o5 we have point d and finally again somewhere along this circular base between 5 and 6 we have point e so all of these intersecting points are going to have their impact in the front view also so let's say we want to fix this point a we know very well that point a lies between 2 and 3 so in the front view it's going to lie between 2 dash and 3 dash and that's point a the precise location of point a now the issue is we want to fix the location of point b we know very well that point b lies in the generator o3 generator o dash 3 dash in the front okay but when you try to draw a line from b it overlaps this generator all right but we want an intersection how can we do so so the trick is you need to take this o as the center and ob as the radius and you need to rotate this in the clockwise sense until you reach here a quarter circle you can say and then you need to go upstairs until you reach here and then turn towards the right and here you have point b dash okay and then for point c it's pretty easy o4 o dash 4 dash and let's project a line here we have point c for point d let's project again this is going to be point d dash and finally somewhere along the circular base between 5 and 6 between 5 dash and 6 dash we're going to have this point as point e and when you join all these points with the help of a smooth curve this is what you call the sectional front view let me show that once again hatching and now the portion which is which can be seen in fact has to be darkened okay the outline the south line have to darken this right something like this so this was all about the sectional front view and this is the sectional top view we'll now go ahead and make the true shape of this section and for that we have to look at this object from over here so let's have an auxiliary plane okay onto which the image of this section is going to be made all right and we have to draw perpendicular lines starting from a b c d and e something like this and for locating the precise location of point a in this true shape we have to take the distances from x y line and put them up with x1 y1 as reference so point a this is the point a lies exactly on this x y line so it is again going to lie exactly on this x1 y1 also so this is the location of point a dash coming downwards downwards here we're going to have point a there you go for locating point b keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here then with this guy x1 y1 as the center you need to put an arc and that's point b let's repeat the same process for c keep one leg of your compass here other leg over here then with this guy x1 y1 as the center put an arc that's point c let's repeat this process for d also this is going to be point d and finally e point is not at a distance the distance is in fact zero from x y line so again point e is going to lie here at a distance of zero from x1 y1 also that's point e and when you join all of these points with the help of a smooth curve this represents the true shape of the section all right so guys that was all from my side if you have any doubts or queries to write them down in the comment section below i'll be very happy to answer them and if you find this video helpful do give it a big thumbs up and if you believe that this video tutorial has added value to your knowledge of engineering graphics or engineering drawing then do recommend this channel to your friends and classmates so that all of you can learn engineering drawing in the best possible way i'll be coming up with a few more problems on different topics uh, in the next week or so until then it's a wrap for today this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep drawing